Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm Avina. And I'm Cole. And this is our dog, Ice. And we live full time in our motorhome, Lucy Lou, and we plan to bring you around Spain with us and beyond. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and like our vlogs. This vlog, we're going to show you around Torrevieja, and we're also going to show you the new air that has recently reopened. We also hope to bring you up to the Floating Museum, which is a fabulous submarine up in the dockyard of Torrevieja. So put the kettle on and enjoy. We got time on our side. When I stayed on home, I need you on my fire. I want you to know that every time you're away, I long for you so much I can find my way. We got so just to get your bearings right, when you come down off the entry 32, just off the slip road there from Punta Prima, coming into Torrebeca on the west side, you will be forgiven or thinking that there wasn't an air in behind that wall, but there is. And unfortunately, that's the only sign down here to let you know that there is an air in there. To get your bearings, if you know, there is a coffee shop right out in front of it. And there's also a kiddies play area. And just beside that yellow building there is the road that leads right up to the entrance. So when you take the road off the seafront, you come right up to the end of this laneway here. You meet this big red building with crystals on the side of it. And there's the motorhome park in there. So when you're coming into the area, you'll be parked in around this area while you go into the reception here on the right hand side. And they will let you know everything you need to know. These are the pitches or bays. And right along the center here, you have ample parking for your gray and black waste and filling up with water. And then each pitch itself then has a water point, a gray water disposal point and electric hookup as well. Well, we did say we were coming back to Torrevieja to visit the Floating Museum, but we're going to have to have a cup of coffee first. Oh, definitely, yeah. yeah. Floating Museum is open, thankfully, and it's open until half past one. So we're going to go up there and have a look. It's only two euro entry, and you get to see a couple of the boats up there. So we'll show you that in a few moments time in here. But first, we want to have a cup of coffee and show you a bit of the promenade here in Torrevieja. It's good to see it filling back up again. Yeah, it's mid-February. It's a cloudy day, but it is quite warm. And there's a good, good crowd around. Even the guys are out selling this. Left, two left shoes and the uh, handbags and the uh, glasses. The, the genuine lot. Nike runners. Yeah, the good stuff. Yeah, so no, so there's a great buzz around the place. So. And the genuine Adidas tops. Oh yeah, of course. Anyway, we're going to go get a coffee or maybe two scoopies in the form of ice cream, by the way. And then um, we'll show you a bit of the promenade as we go down the way. There's the lovely Lola still looking out to sea, waiting for her husband to come back. Guys, look at the genuine articles here. Hugo Boss, Adidas, Nike, oh, Air Max. The best of gear. Half the price. And if you don't... Okay, so you're now looking at the Delphin S61 submarine. In 1974, Torrevieja gave the submarine the flag of combat. And 33 years later, in 2007, it became the first floating museum from the Spanish fleet. It has a total of eight rooms along its 57.8 meters length 
and can carry up to 33 passengers and it also is equipped with 12 torpedoes. And on the outside of the submarine, you can see this mine that the ship's navigators had to navigate the way around in order to protect the staff on board. So we left the air in Tarvieka and we headed northwest to a place called Sax. Who doesn't like a bit of Sax on a Sunday morning? <laughs> <laughs> and as you've seen on the drone footage there, the mountain range behind us here, that's where we're cycling at the moment. Just came up for a short mountain bike ride along these trails. And we're greeted with these fantastic views. Okay, so we're here at a town called Sax. There just seems to be one long street, massive river runs through it. All your supermarkets are closed at the moment because it's Sunday during winter, so the majority of them are closed. Co at the moment is doing some editing, so myself and I decided that we'd head off down, have a look at this town. There's a lovely big castle in the middle of it, so we're going to try and find that and have a look around. So I've come to the top of this walkway. And I've come as far as what I think is the entry point. So I'm hoping I can bring ice with me and go have a look around at this beautiful building. All right, I'm not even that far up. But these steps are getting me to undress already. It's starting to get warm. All right, are you ready to drag me up the hill, mister? Come on, let's go. All right, come on. Let's go and see what this is all about. Okay, so we've made it up to the castle, but uh, the castle's closed, so Cole's going to throw up some footage from the drone. I'm going to give you a quick caption of the actual castle and a bit of a history to it. So, a few interesting facts. Uh, this castle is situated in the Alicante region. It was built in the 12th century. Um, it's over 524 metres above sea level. It was built as a defensive position and now they've made it into a nice attraction area with um, stairs surrounding it that you can climb around to see it from each angle. It's closed at the moment. It opens up at certain hours during the day. Uh, it overlooks the village and it also overlooks the river of Vinalopo. So, that's the end of that walk. Really enjoyed it. Great views up here. Steps on the way up were a bit tricky for ice and we tried to walk back down them and he didn't like them at all. So we're going to take the long way back, probably a more scenic route back, back to Coe. Hopefully he's finished doing the Eden and uh, might go around and uh, have a cup of coffee in, in the local village and see what it's all about. Go to see that river. Come on, come on, good boy, good boy. Right, so made it back to the motorhome. Coe's finishing editing. He's just putting out the video. So that's the video from last week that's just gone out. We're going to pack up here and we're going to head and find another air to stay in, maybe for a couple of days as we could do with some downtime. Um, kind of just moving a lot at the moment. So it's time now just to pack up and hit the road one more time. Hey, whoa, 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 wait for me. Wait for me. Well, <laughs> we didn't find, well, we did find the air in air and it was all fully booked up and it wasn't, it was a, it was a car park space that just didn't work. Yeah, it was yeah. not nice looking at all. Uh, so Gravel car park. Yeah, we're kind of limbo of kind of where we're going, what we want to do. We do know we want to head kind of slightly northeast, and before we knew it, we were kind of going more inland. So. Yeah, so we've done an about turn, and we were going to go somewhere else, but it was 53 kilometres to, uh, to go. But we decided to pull back into Saks, regroup, and then look at other options. So we've come to an area called Castalla, Castalla, something like that. It's a free park up. 
and we're only using this just to get through the night. <laughs> yeah, park up, we're just going to go down to town, have a few beers. Ice is uh, securing the HQ for us while we go out and uh, just, just write today off. <laughs> anyway, we're going for two scoopies. Beer. Good morning and after a quick one night stop in the town called Castella, we're now going to head on to an area called Ralu. Beautiful scenery up around that place. It's about an hour's drive from here. Abina's just done doing the shopping at the moment. I just got my call to come over and help her with the water. I'm gonna hit the road. I would be up waiting for you if you had to leave. I would wait a lifetime if you were at sea. I just wanna say that I feel that our love is real. So after an hour and 15 minutes of driving, we've arrived here in the village of Relieu. Village or a town? I don't really know, actually. But um, lovely little park up here. You can see it there. Communal park up right beside the castle. And the communal swimming pool as well, which is obviously closed at the moment due to the winter conditions. Weather isn't great, although, having said that, it's not Ireland either, is it? We're going to go down for a walk down the town now and have a look around and find a coffee shop have no coffee and a cup of tea, and then just chill out for the rest of the day and hopefully get to see this castle lit up tonight. This town dates right back to the 13th century as well, all the way back to the Muslim period that were occupying these areas and occupied the castle here as well. And apparently back in the 17th century, this town was, went dormant as a result of everybody leaving. I don't know when it actually picked up its population again. It seems a little bit quiet at the moment, but you can tell by the houses there as well that it's very much part of that era. Every one of these side streets are absolutely beautiful guys to walk along. If you're ever in this area, you have to take a walk. Fabulous. So quiet, so peaceful, so beautiful. Continuing on from that beautiful street that we just walked up a few minutes ago, and our objective was to find a coffee shop. And we found one right here, right on the corner. Bar Abatec. And in my best Spanish, I ordered a tea and coffee, even the tea with the cold milk separate. <laughs> and then you find right at the bottom of the menu there, English breakfast. <laughs> Fabulous. Totally taken surprise there by that lady in the restaurant after showing you the sign for the English breakfast in it as well. And after speaking my best broken Spanish in an Irish accent, she comes out to me and speaks fluent English because she's from England. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely lady. Lovely, Lovely lady. <laughs> Lovely restaurant. She's now getting ready to do a paella party later on tonight. Good morning. Welcome to the 1st of March here in Relieu. A beautiful morning. The sun is splitting the trees. However, the weather is supposed to turn Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday and Monday. It's forecast for raining. So we haven't a clue what we're going to go and do. However, Today, we're going to do something special. You ever seen those uh, scariest walks in the world whereby they have kind of a, like a rope bridge going along, the, traversing along the side of a mountain? We're going to be doing a mini version of that today. It's about five and a half kilometers from here. We'll go down to the town hall first, get our tickets, and then we'll run the rest of the route. So we'll probably have about 11 and a half, 12 kilometer round trip to get to it. We're going to leave ice in the van because no dogs are allowed. Hopefully bring the drone and get a bit of footage of that as well and have a bit of fun. So we're here at the local swimming pool and we're just going to head down into the village to the town hall. We're going to pick up some tickets to head out to the skywalk. A little bit of a jog walk today. Yeah. Just to protect to old age and injuries. Jog downhill and walk up. <laughs> <laughs> And this is the town hall, guys, in the village of Relieu, where you get those tickets to do the skywalk. Abina's going to go in there now, and we'll be on our merry way. So Abina's just come out there now, and apparently this is not where you get the tickets to do the walk. You have to go to another area called Basile or something like that. Don't know. Haven't a clue where that is. Can't find it on the map. So what we're going to do now is we're going to run out that way anyway, and hopefully there'll be some sort of a ticket office there, and we may have to queue up at this stage. But either way, we'll get out to see it anyway.
take you there No dogs, no dogs, as you would appreciate. Excuse me. I'm sure Ice is happy with that. <laughs> <laughs> so the Skywalk itself is 220 meters long and it leads right out to my left hand side here, right to a glass roof looking down into the ravine. Something similar to what you've seen us doing down in Gibraltar there not too long ago as well. We'll leave a link to that video on this one as well. ravine down there guys so deep you can imagine the gushings of water going down through that during the winter period so the glass is all supposed to be see-through but unfortunately it's not too much muck on it from people walking along here that's the views that you see guys as i said short walk but well worth the 250 each to come along and do this just to see it just to be up here just to get the sensation of fear <laughs> And just like that, we've done an about turn, made our way back from the ravine, and we're now going to go to that English Spanish lady, have a coffee, a tea, and a couple of toasted of sandwiches. Well deserved. Well deserved. Really like that now, that was really nice. And of course, we've got fantastic weather for it as well. Kind of like a calm before the storm, really, with the weather that's coming in for the weekend. But anyway, that's a wrap on this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and don't be afraid to leave us a comment. Yeah, we'd like to say a big hello to Eddie and Martina from Galway. We met them on the strip in Cabaroy. We'd like to say hello to them, it was great yeah. meeting them. Hi guys, thanks very much for recognising us. Not that we're famous or anything like that <laughs> at all. <laughs> it was nice to meet you and have a chat with you. And best of luck on your travels back to Lockery. See you out and about. <laughs> <laughs>